Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, in the matchless name of Yahushua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the host of Come Out of Her, my broad, uh, Come Out of Her, my people broadcast, and we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahushua, Mashiach. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut, ladies and gentlemen. We don't beat around the bushes. Uh, we don't tiptoe through the tulips. We let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into... Um, a video on this day. Even though some advocate for the total abstinence of alcohol as a moral mandate for all believers, the Bible never requires all believers to abstain from wine. Contrary to what many have grown up hearing, it is not a sin to drink alcohol. The scripture nowhere condemns or prohibits consuming moderate levels of wine. However, wine is the only alcoholic beverage permitted for believers to consume in the New Testament period. Beer and strong drinks such as scotch, whiskey, bourbon, vodka, rum, gin, brandy, etc. are prohibited. In the book of John, chapter 2, at the marriage in Cana of Galilee, where Yahoshua performed his uh, first miracle, we see where Yahoshua and his disciples were invited to this wedding. The water that the Messiah turned into wine was fermented. Yahoshua drunk fermented wine. The religious leaders accused him of being a drunkard. Luke chapter 7 verses 33 through 34, Yahoshua declared, For John the Baptist came neither, eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say, He have a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Of course, Yahoshua never got drunk, but he did drink wine. It was also tradition for Hebrews to drink wine at the yearly Passover meal in which the Messiah routinely participated. He also instituted the Master's Supper or uh, Communion, ladies and gentlemen, with bread and wine. It is clear that drinking wine is not a sin. Otherwise, Yahoshua would not have done it. Many say today that the wine that believers drunk in Scripture was simply grape juice and it was not fermented. They are extremely wrong. If the wine they drunk was not fermented, why did Apostle Paul declare in Ephesians 5 and 18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit? One cannot get drunk from grape juice. Even believers, when they partook of the Master's Supper or communion, they use fermented wine. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 20 through 21 declares, When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Master's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. Apostle Paul reproved the Corinthians for abusing the Master's Supper. 
Paul said in verse 21, one is hungry and another is drunken. How can one get drunk from grape juice? We see here that the Corinthians church used fermented wine during their communion service. Paul did not reprove them for using uh, fermented wine, but for abusing the bread and the wine, not discerning the master's body. Ministers are the only ones that were prohibited in scripture not to drink wine. First Timothy chapter three, verses two through three declares a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, Verse three, not given to wine. If wine was the equivalent of grape juice, why was a bishop or pastor of an assembly prohibited not to drink wine? Ladies and gentlemen, where you see the term wine in scripture, it is always fermented. Ministers are prohibited from drinking wine because being in their position, it was required of them to be sober minded. Wine being able to cause one to be intoxicated can make one pervert judgment. Leviticus chapter 10 and verses 8 through 11. Leviticus chapter 10, beginning with verse Number eight, listen to what the word of Yahweh says. And Yahweh spake unto Aaron saying, do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee. When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean and that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which Yahweh have spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. So the priests were forbidding a man to drink wine when they go into the tabernacle to do their service, ladies and gentlemen, because wine can cause one to pervert judgment, ladies and gentlemen, it can throw one's judgment off. So uh, a, a bishop, a pastor, the priest in the old covenant had to be sober minded. Proverbs 31 verses four through five declares, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Least they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Deacons can drink wine, but only in moderation. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 8 declares, Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. We see here that a deacon is not prohibited uh, to drink wine. He cannot be given to much wine. He must strictly observe his intake of wine. So a deacon can drink wine, ladies and gentlemen, but he must drink a little wine. He must drink wine in moderation. The only time a minister, a bishop, a pastor can drink wine when he partake of communion or when wine is used for medication. Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5, verse 23, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Because of poor sanitation in ancient times, people were vulnerable to different types of sicknesses such as food poisoning and diarrhea, the drinking 
water often had parasites. Therefore, wine was used as a medicine to help cure sickness. Today, many Christians drink beer and strong drink, but they are sinning, ladies and gentlemen. Saints are prohibited to drink beer, malt liquors, and strong drink. These products are high in alcohol content. Wine is the most common alcoholic beverage mentioned in biblical literature and was an important part of daily life in biblical times. Additionally, the inhabitants of ancient Israel drank wines made from fruits other than grapes. However, the alcohol content of ancient alcoholic beverages was significantly lower than in modern times, ladies and gentlemen, uh, modern alcoholic beverages. The low alcohol content was due to the limitations of fermenta uh, fermentation and the non-existence of distillation methods in the ancient world. Rabbinic teachers wrote acceptance criteria on con consumability of ancient alcoholic beverages at the significant dilution with water and prohibited undiluted wine. Yahweh gave no wine to Israel, nor did they have any intoxication, intoxicating drink in the wilderness. Deuteronomy chapter 29 beginning with verse 5. Listen to what the word of Yahweh says here in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and beginning with verse 5. And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old upon you and thy shoe is not waxing old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread neither have you drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am Yahweh thy Elohim. So Yahweh did not allow them to drink any wine or strong drink because he wanted the children of Israel to know who their Elohim was, ladies and gentlemen. Bless Yahweh, amen, for the truth. And this is simply why uh, bishops, pastors could not drink wine. They were prohibited, amen, of consuming wine, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh, because they had to be sober-minded. And wine can cause one to be intoxicated. Therefore, they can uh, pervert judgment, ladies and gentlemen, uh, misjudge situations. So, it was very important that uh, someone in a spiritual leadership capacity, such as a bishop or a pastor, could not drink any wine. They had to continue to be sober-minded, ladies and gentlemen, at all times. And I've read to you that a deacon could drink wine, but he could only drink a small amount of wine, ladies and gentlemen. And then the Bible tells us in the book of Titus concerning aged women, because aged women had a responsibility to teach the young women. Therefore, they had to be sober also. The Bible says in the book of Titus, uh, chapter number two, amen, I'm going to start with verse one. But speak thou the things which become his sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober. The aged men had to be sober. That means they couldn't consume a lot of wine. Grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity and patience. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as become comes holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine. Teachers of good things. There's another thing I want to bring out. In a, in a lot of European countries, ladies and gentlemen, like Germany, France, glory to y'all, uh, Austria, uh, from, a, from a child, children grow up 
uh, drinking wine, ladies and gentlemen, at supper time, at dinner time. It's just a, uh, it's, it's a common thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's normal even for children to grow up, amen, drinking wine. Glory to Yahweh. So, Yahushua would drunk wine, and it, it was uh, an alcoholic beverage. It was fermented wine, ladies and gentlemen. At the at the, uh, the Master's Supper or communion service, they used fermented wine also. Yahushua turned a water into wine. It was a man, a fermented wine. Yahushua kept kept the Passover at the Passover, ladies and gentlemen, it was customarily that the Hebrew people drunk wine. Glory to Yahweh. So wine, amen, is uh, uh, not prohibited, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, people uh, to drink. Glory to Yahweh. Amen. Glory to Yahweh. They can, the saints of Yahweh could drink a little wine. They could drink wine in moderation, but it was not uh, permitted, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, bishops, pastors, glory to Yahweh, people in spiritual uh, leadership capacities, amen, to drink uh, wine. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 23, ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin reading uh, with verse 20, Proverbs chapter 23, and let's look at Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 20. It says, be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. Don't go around people that's partying, barbecuing, ladies and gentlemen, drinking their beers and their alcohol. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Then it goes down, goes on to say, Amen, in verses number uh, 30. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself upright. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. Scriptures say the wine biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder, like a, 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 a viper, ladies and gentlemen. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. You get that alcohol in you, glory to Yahweh. It make you do some strange things. Give you boldness, ladies and gentlemen. You begin to lust at the women. And thine heart shall utter perverse things. Amen. This is why they call alcohol spirits, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. That's why they call it spirits, like when a person is demon possessed. Yea, uh, thou shall be as he that lies down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lies upon the top of a mass. They have stricken me, shall thou say, and I was not sick. My goodness, you like pre people draw and they get in fights. They don't even feel the pain, ladies and gentlemen. They don't even feel the pain of being beat. Glory to Yahweh. Thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me and I felt it not. That's what that alcohol would do to an individual when people are inflamed with alcohol. When shall I wake? I will seek it yet again. Bless the name of Yahweh. Then in Proverbs chapter 20, amen, in verse number one, the word of Yahweh declares, it says, wine is a mocker. Wine can be a mocker. You get drunk off of wine. Amen. It can be a mock. A strong drink is raging. My goodness. You get that rum in you, that vodka, that malt liquor, that beer, glory to you, that, that rum, and amen, that gin, and that brandy, glory, that whiskey, and that scotch in you. You'll do some crazy things, ladies and gentlemen. And whosoever is deceived, their by is not wise. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not 
wise, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Now, my advice to a former alcoholic, if once alcohol was your crush, alcohol was uh, one of your weaknesses, ladies and gentlemen, you should never touch wine. Stay away from it. Let bygones be bygones. You don't want to open up a can of worms. You had that can of worm closed for several years, many years. However, you used to be a drunkard. You used to drink that alcohol. You was an alcoholic, they say in the West. Here in uh, Kenya, they say drunkard, ladies and gentlemen. Same thing, just different wording. You don't want to open up a can of worms. You can wake up that old man again. So it would be best for you to stay away from any alcoholic beverage. Stay away from wine. Amen. Because it can wake up that old man again. And you find yourself, amen, back involved in that thing. You can build back up the things, amen, that you once, amen, destroyed. Bless the name of Yahweh. And so there was a time in my life that I believe um, I come up uh, Roman Catholic. And then I uh, gravitated to the Pentecostals and Apostolics. And they taught uh, that you can't even drink wine, ladies and gentlemen. And I believe that for years I thought you couldn't even touch wine. But as I began to study the Bible and stop listening to man and the traditions of men and commandments and teachings of men and I began to investigate is right right before you in the scriptures ladies and gentlemen glory to Yahweh that the saints of Yahweh drunk alcoholic beverage they drunk firm minute wine no they didn't drink any beer they didn't drink strong drink but they drunk wine ladies and gentlemen now some of this these products today they call wine um, ladies and gentlemen, it, it's full of chemicals. It, it's, it's to cause one to get high. Amen. To cause one to lust. Ladies, it cause one to just do crazy things. I'm not talking about that boom farm and all that old uh, lightning bird, that, that cheap stuff, uh, Mad Dog, MD2020, that cheap Polk and all that stuff. That stuff is cheap wine, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's cheap. It's mixed with more chemicals than it is with, with, with wine, ladies and gentlemen, with the fruit of the vine. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about authentic wine. We're talking about pure, authentic wine, ladies and gentlemen. It is, um, it is okay. It is permitted. It is permitted for a child of Yahweh, amen, to drink wine in moderation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to close here. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. Um, we would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we thank Yahweh for all of our followers, all of our listeners. We want you to know we pray for you daily. We pray for all of our followers. We pray for each and every one of your needs daily, ladies and gentlemen. We lay before Yahweh and we pray to Yahweh for each and every one of you. You know, because it's rare to find a man, people like you today. When you find the remnant, when you find the chosen, the elect, a man you value that relationship you value your friendship it's not many of us ladies and gentlemen it's not many of us out here so we need to pray for one another we are the only ones that we have we don't even have our families many of you think you do but you don't really have your family Yahoshua said who is my mother who is my brother? Who is my sister? They that do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my mother, my brother, and my sister. So we thank Yahweh for you, and we would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. Also, send your comments. We'd like to hear your thoughts, like to hear from you, and amen. Until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Peace and blessings. Shalom.